The React community is huge. And because it's so huge, there are lots of little cults in it. Groups of folks who rally together against some shared misunderstanding. Someone put up a blog post, it goes viral, and suddenly we have an entire cult of folks willing to die on the hill of always doing this or never doing that. Take this blog post where this author sped up tan stack table by a thousand times, a thousand times, by removing the spread operator. And honestly, in that case, it was true. But folks summarized it and simplified it to the point where spread is bad, which Brings us to the first of several React cults, the Never Spreaders. Also known as Primogen fans, the Never Spreaders believe that they have found the one true performance villain in the React world, and it's the lowly spread operator. So here's the deal. React is based on immutability. To tell React that an array or object has changed, you need to give it a new array reference. Usually, that means making a shallow copy of the array or the object into a new array or object, then making the change and giving it the updated array or object. So that tells React that it's changed. So we make a lot of shallow copies, and spread is a very fast way to do that. And yes, it does create a new array or object. That's true. But you have to do that. You have to create a new array or object to tell React that something has changed. There's just no getting around that. That's immutability. And for all the pearl clutching about memory allocation, they miss the elephant in the room, which is often right below the spread operator in the code. All that JSX, each tag in there, is a call to create element, which allocates memory. Now, I'm not saying you can't abuse the spread operator like they did in that thousand times article. You can, definitely. This reduce pattern, where you create a new object for each iteration, is really bad. But there's an easy fix for that that produces exactly the same result, but avoids creating the temporary objects in between. So I would give the cult of the never spreaders in React a two out of five for the accuracy of their beliefs, because spreading most of the time is perfectly fine, but there are some anti-patterns where it's not. So there's a little bit of accuracy there. I cover state managers a lot on this channel, and that's because they are important to React. But, and it's a big but, you don't always need a state manager. And so often I hear folks say, you have to use Redux. Or they ask me, which state manager do you use? Which assumes that I have to use one. You have to use one in React, right? But you don't, honestly. When React first started out, sure. State options and components were designed primarily for visual state, like whether a menu is open or closed. And the tools that we had in class-based state management weren't that good. But with React Hooks, we got a much better state management mechanism built right into React. And Hooks, in combination with context and form state and URLs, can oftentimes be all the state management your app needs. And even then, when you need a state manager, it doesn't always need to be Redux. There are a lot of very legitimate, lighter weight options out there now, like the very popular Zustand library. So if you're always picking up Redux every time you create a new app, you're really missing out on potentially easier and more appropriate options, which include not using a state manager at all. So I give the cult of Redux a three out of five because there are a lot of cases where an external state manager is good, but really, you don't always need one. I am all about code cleanliness, believe me, but not at the expense of performance or correctness. Take this component. Seems okay, right? We have the header component, and its definition is nicely nested inside of the layout. So clean, so tidy, so Marie Kondo. But don't ever do this. Make it its own component instead. The React docs even have a special pitfall section on just this idea of nested components. But yet, so many people want to use them. I don't know why. One of the reasons that they're bad is that you're redefining components every time you re-render the main component, like in this case, layout. And that keeps React from doing any kind of intelligent caching. And you lose all of the state inside of the component. And in the past, when I've talked about how bad nested components are, I'll often get asked questions like, well, what if I'd put them in a use memo or use callback? 
That's not what those functions are for. And even if they were, when you redefine the component, you still lose all that state. So it's not really saving you anything. And speaking of state, a lot of folks who use this pattern often share state with the host, I guess. In this case, it's layout. That's just bad. Don't do that. Use props. Use context. Use React the way it was meant to be used. Write React the way it was meant to be written. So for the condo coding cultists out there defining their components inside of other components, I give you zero stars. Your pattern is specifically called out in the docs as a no-no. Just don't do it. Don't try to work around it. Just make components as top-level functions like they're written in the documentation. That's the way that you write React. Do your research, man. Use callback and use memo are evil. So I get asked a lot, should I use use callback and use memo? And I'll read in the comments that use memo is terrible for performance. As if the React team specifically added these hooks that we shouldn't use just to impact performance. Okay, well, let's get some things straight. First off, use memo used correctly is not terrible for performance. Let's take this table component. You give it some rows and a sort function, and every time it re-renders, it creates a new copy of that rows array using to sort it and sorts it. Now, fair enough, but you only need to resort if either the rows or the sort function changes. So let's use a use memo for that. So where's the overhead here? Is it wrapping to sorted in a function? Not really, because invoking a function in JS is just really fast. Is it in evaluating the dependency array? No, because that's just two calls to object.is, and all object.is is doing is comparing two different locations of memory, which is a super fast operation. So if the overhead isn't in speed, is it in extra memory? Well, not really, because the only additional memory here is the reference to the callback function closure, and for the dependency array. And both of those things are really nothing in comparison to the underlying rows memory. So actually, I'd argue that use memo is really good here because it's doing the important work of avoiding running the sort if it's not required. And even better, it's stabilizing the reference to sorted rows. Sorted rows as a reference will only change if rows or sort change. And speaking of stabilizing references, let's say we have a table parent component that uses that table. So looking at the table parent code, how often is the use memo in table going to be triggered? Well, it's going to be triggered every time table parent re-renders, even if rows aren't changing. Why? Because we're creating a new sort function every time. Even when the implementation of sort doesn't change, its reference in memory changes. Mind-blowing, right? And we can fix that easily with the use callback. Now the reference to the sort function doesn't change. So it'll be the same on every render, and that use memo won't get triggered. And this works for React.memo, too. With a memoed component, you always have to be sure that any array or object references you send it are stabilized. Otherwise, you just might as well not memoize it at all. So I'd give this anti-use memo and use callback cult a zero out of five stars. It's not at all true. You should avoid use memo and use callback. All right, question for you. If a component re-renders, does that mean 100% of the time that there'll be a repaint of that whole component on the screen? No. So here's the deal. When your component renders, it creates virtual DOM nodes. Those virtual DOM nodes are compared with the previous render, and only when those are different is the DOM actually updated. And even then, React is very precise when it updates the DOM. It only changes what's required. In other words, React components are designed to re-render. And if your components don't re-render, <laughs> that's actually a bug. So if someone is telling you that your components should only ever render once, they are lying. That's not the way the React works. That's the way Solid works, actually. But don't try to turn React into Solid. If you want to do that, just use Solid. Don't fight the React framework. Write React the way it was meant to be written. Write components that are re-renderable and that actually re-render. And speaking of fighting the framework, don't manually attach event listeners to DOM elements or adjust the contents of DOM elements directly, maybe using something like signals. Or use get element by ID. Use refs instead. Let React handle the DOM. That's what it was meant to do. That's why we put this massive library on the page to handle the DOM for us. So I give the single render cult a score of zero out of five stars. Don't fight the framework, people. 
This last cult is really weird, and honestly, I don't see it that often, but I rarely talk about class components since it's 2024, and you shouldn't be using class components. The only time you need a class component now is an error boundary, and I'm pretty sure eventually we won't even need that. Components in React should be declared using functions and use hooks. But for folks still on the class component train, there is a rule around class components, and that's don't make hierarchical classes. All the components should extend the base React component. That's been true since day one, honestly. It's even called out specifically in the docs not to make hierarchies of components. And I gotta say, I get it. I've used UIKit on Apple and Views on Android and other frameworks, and they've got these huge hierarchies of classes and their view structures in the classic OO style. And that, and that works for them, but that's not how React does it. React is and always will be a compositional framework with a flat inheritance structure. It's the same in classes as it is in functions. It's all done via composition. So don't fight the framework. So to the cult of the pyramid folks, I give you, again, a zero out of five because your patterns are specifically called out in the docs as the wrong way to do it. So you get a zero. I've been YouTubing for over three years and I made hundreds of videos on technology. And one thing that I'm keenly aware of is the fact that none of it is gonna have any lasting value outside of when I talk about how to have a healthy engineering mindset. And all of these React cults are people that don't have healthy engineering mindsets. The never spreaders, they are absolutist thinkers. They think in black and white terms. And software just doesn't work that way. It's always about trade-offs. The spread operator is often awesome, but sometimes not so great in certain situations. A friend of mine says, often, I have... Strong beliefs, loosely held. The always have a state manager folks are an example of strong beliefs, strongly held. The world is changing and they are refusing to adapt to this new world. The rest of them are just folks who are resistant to change. They are the most frustrating folks to work with, honestly, because they've learned what works in, say, another framework. Like, I've figured out how this works on Android and I'm going to take those understandings and smush them into React and see if that works. And it doesn't. The resultant code is terrible and difficult to maintain. And when you bring on new people on the project, they have no idea why it's structured that way because it doesn't look like React. And it's very, very, very frustrating. So if you unlearn some anti-patterns from all of this, that is fantastic. But what I really want you to take home is an understanding of a healthy engineering mindset and how to adapt to change because change is the only constant in technology. All right, when I'm not doing YouTube, I'm working on a course called Pro Next JS. It's at pronextjs.dev. Be sure to go check it out. In the meantime, of course, if you like this video, hit the like button. If you really like the video, hit the subscribe button and click on that bell and be notified the next time a new blue collar coder comes out.